Hi, this is Rob, and this is for my digital fabrication class. We're using Fusion 360 to model a game piece for these game, these board games that we're designing, and uh, we're going to go through this process of milling our designs in machinable wax, and then casting silicone into the wax, and eventually casting pewter into the silicone mold. So we've kind of agreed upon some uh, basic dimensions that we all want to work with, and um, so I'm going to give you an idea of how this works. We did this in class, but this will be a kind of a, a reference that you could go back to. So I'm going to start by creating a sketch on this bottom work plane, and I'm just going to give it a rectangle. So I'm going to make something that kind of looks like a uh, like a rectangular game piece, almost like a tile, and um, just have a little bit of a relief design on top of it. Um, so. I'm going to make this, actually before I start, I'm going to go back and change my units to millimeters. And then try that again. So rectangle, I'm going to do a center rectangle, and I'll make it 25 millimeters by 25 millimeters, which we said is kind of our maximum. We'll test this in class, and maybe this is just too crazy to make something this small, but uh, we'll see how it looks tomorrow or uh, whenever you're watching this, we're going to try it on the milling machine uh, this week. So um, the next thing we're going to do is just kind of make a design on here. Uh, I think I'll make a um, center circle, and it's going to be that big. And then um, I'll put on top of that a polygon, which is actually going to be a triangle. So I'll change the number of sides to three, and then I'll make it a big mm. sure why not okay so um, I think I'm ready to stop the sketch now we talked about so the way I want this to look is I want this uh, I want there to be a base and then I want a raised uh, circle and then I'm gonna go back down kind of carve out this triangle so we've talked about inside corners and how with a, a tool like an end mill that has a radius to it, we can never get a, a really tight uh, corner like that. So what we're going to do is add a fillet. And we could do it here in the sketch by adding fillet, but I'm going to stop and just do that later when I extrude it. Here it is, and I will do press pull. And uh, maybe the way I'll do this is to just select these two faces. I'll select all the faces. And I'll make my base which is um, going to be, I don't know, maybe six millimeters tall. And then I'll go ahead and turn that sketch back on and extrude just the uh, circle, the outer part of the circle. And I'll make that come up all the way through my six millimeters and then up an additional four millimeters. I don't want to cut, I want to join, and you'll see that makes it of an extension of that base that I had. Hit OK. And at this point, um, I'm, I'm pretty much done. I just want to do this really simple thing to, to have as a demonstration. But I'm going to show you some of the manufacturing details that we're concerned with because we're making a molt. So one of them is that fillet that I was talking about. I think I should be able to uh, select each of these edges. and then go into Modify and Fill It, which they've added some on uh, the newest version. They've added some shortcuts. So you can see you actually just have to use the letter F. I have it in the toolbar because I use it often. Any of those will work. So let's um, let's make it go in. How much? I don't know. Well, uh, you know, I have to make sure that I'm not compromising my design, and hopefully I've worked this all out on paper before I get to Fusion 360 in the first place. But I'm concerned about having the right amount of radius here. And since I know the uh, radius of the 132nd inch end mill is, um, the radius is half of 0.79 millimeters. But uh, I think if we just did 0.4 for the, for the radius, we'd be in good shape. So I'm just going to keep it at that. And then the other thing I'm worried about is, uh, or, you know, mm, yeah. Uh, well, you know, I'm going to do the, I'm going to do the draft first. Be interesting to see how it drafts these two walls with the fillet in there. I, I suspect Fusion 360 is smart enough to 
to do it properly, but um, let's do the draft first. So what we do is we select the plane that we're working off of and uh, and then the, the face that we want to draft. And so for this, I'm just going to leave it at five degrees, and that's basically just kind of giving me this five degree uh, angle instead of having it go straight down. This is something that you'd want to do in a mold uh, where you actually have to pull this out of some, some mold, but we're, we're dealing with silicone. Uh, it's not a problem. What is a problem, however, if I undo, is maybe uh, if I look at the distance from here to here, the question would be, can my 132nd inch end mill, which is going to have to make its way over this, uh, can it actually, um, does it have a long enough length of cut to cover this area? And the length of cut of the 32nd inch is about 2.38 millimeters, and you can see this is 4 millimeters, so I really should have a draft here so that the uh, end mill can actually uh, cut cut all the way down without the without rubbing, basically, up here, right? We talked about this in class. So um, let's try adding a draft again, and I will make it this face. Five degrees is fine for me, and part of it is just making it uh, look the way I want. I kind of like, like it with a probably what is more than uh, enough draft. So I'll do the same thing here, and you know, it's unfortunate, but I don't really know of a good way to have it draft multiple uh, faces at once. The best I've been able to do is draft two faces at once by selecting um, using a drag. If you drag towards the left, it'll capture both of those faces. So that works, and then I've had to go and do the last one um, on its own. So. Let's try that again. There, there, and we'll hit OK. And that's it. Now, the last thing is, I mentioned this before, if you have really sharp edges and you're uh, making this mold, it's possible that the casting material, um, depending on what it is, there's, th there may be some bubbles that end up at all these sharp joints. So again, this has to coincide with how you want your design to work. But what I'm going to do is fill it these edges so that they um, so that they aren't so sharp. So let me just do that. And in fact, I could fill it this one. It might, it might actually look nice if I fill it that one too. So I'll just do that. And uh, I'll hit fill it. But it actually, you know, it's going to be a very small fillet, like 0.1 millimeters, just to give it like not a sharp edge. Um, you know, do 0.15. All of this kind of uh, guesswork and um, just stabbing at numbers really is because this is a demo. I would expect you to design everything on paper first and um, and then try and model it according to what you've designed on paper. So I'm going to also include these, and I'll just do a second fillet, even though I could go back and modify that one. And I'll do the same thing, 0.15. Okay, so I'm just about there. I think the last thing I wanted to do is add this fillet, right, so that it actually can make that radius. And uh, let's select each of those edges. And do one more fillet. And this is the one that's going to be about 0.4 millimeters. Hmm, doesn't like that, I think, because I've already filleted these. So what can we do? Well, one thing we could do is go back in time before I did those fillets, and let's see if I can do it now. Fillet, 0.4 millimeters, and hit OK. And let's see if we can move forward in time and work. Well, it didn't like that one fillet that I did here. So a couple things I could do. Um, I could edit this and include these extra. Oh, well, that worked. I think it's OK. Um, the tangent vein is on. When I selected that one, I think it selected this entire area. And I can hit OK. We're all good. We have no warnings down here. And it looks exactly like I wanted. So. What I'm going to do is name this body, and uh, I'll just call it Game Keys. And then what I need is my um, my actual mold around there. Now, hopefully you either took a photo or you drew in your sketchbook um, our dimensions that we came up with, but I also have this drawing that I made just to kind of 
remember what we came up with. So I'm going to go by this and um, and just lay out the rest. So the way I'll do that is to create a sketch again on that bottom work plane. And um, I think the easiest way to do this is to just project that body that I just made. See, I've got body selected here. So when I click this body, it'll actually bring over the outline of that body into my new sketch. And that makes this next step easier, which is to actually um, make that trough in my mold, which I think we said should be about 14 millimeters. And then I'll do another offset, which is the wall of my mold. And I said that should be 0.5 millimeters. And I'll stop the sketch. So um, <laughs> I'll extrude. Really, I'm only interested in the wall. So I'm going to extrude up. Now, how far up should I go? We said that we need at least five millimeters from the top of your game piece to uh, the top of the wax. So I will, I don't remember how tall this game piece is, let's say. So I'll just hit two to let it go to the top of my game piece. And now if I just switch back to distance, it tells me that was 10 millimeters. So I want to add five to that. So I'll just actually make it 15. And uh, hopefully this, you know, this is, video is not enough to make sense of all of this. We went over this in depth in class, so hopefully this is just a reminder for you. Okay, and the last thing I'm going to do is make a sketch on the bottom surface. Uh, basically, I think this is the easiest way to do it. I'll make it, um, actually I'm making it on the work plane, but approaching it from the bottom, and I'm just going to make a rectangle the size of the outer walls. I'll stop that sketch and I'll just press pull that. So let's see what I'm doing here. I'm uh, I'm actually making this bottom right, and so the overall height from there to there should be the thickness of my wax. I'm basically trying to model the actual chunk of wax and how we carve out of it. So this is all going to be a cavity uh, into which we'll pour silicone, and this is a positive version of my game piece, which will give me a negative version in the silicone. So um, I have this thin wall around here. I could have made this wider, but we talked about why that might make the actual milling process confusing. So I just wanted a really thin wall. Uh, but the height does need to be, this is one of our dimensions that we have to stick with. That should be 25 millimeters because that's the thickness of the wax. So uh, this was 15. And so I'm going to add another 10 in the, in the opposite direction to make this overall height uh, 25 millimeters. Now, if I join right now. It'll join my game piece and the walls that I built. So I think what I'm going to do is turn off the game piece and let it join. And what I'll end up with is a game piece that's separate from the, uh, the mold, kind of uh, the wax, right? The wax structure for the mold. Okay. So I'm pretty much done at this point. The last thing I might want to do is uh, just double check that the height of this uh, cut that has to happen here is... Um, smaller than the length of cut of my eighth inch end mill. That's the end mill that's going to do all the roughing cuts. I don't have to make it work for my really small finishing end mill, the 32nd or the 16th inch end mill, because I showed you in class that our finishing pass only covers this area. It doesn't go all the way out to the wall, and that's to save us time and also to not have to worry about that very uh, oddly shaped end mill with a very small length of cut having to deal with this tall wall. But the eighth inch end mill does have to deal with the tall wall and its length of cut is only just over 11 millimeters. So what I want to do is add a draft to these walls and uh, let's see if we can do that right now. So there's a draft tool and I'm going to draft off of the top and again I'd like to draft all of these walls but I think it's only going to let me do uh, one at a time. I think, uh, well two at a time. So I, I could go with five degrees because it would be okay, but um, I'm going to go with uh, two because of what we agreed upon. But you know what? It could be more, so I'm going to do five. Why not? Okay, and then um, I think, unfortunately, I have to do the same thing on the other side because I don't know of a good way to draft a bunch of profiles at once or faces at once. So. Uh, again, I'm just going to drag here and capture both of those, and it's still 5 degrees, so I'll hit OK. And if I look from the side, um, this is 
basically what I want, and the reason why I can see the lines inside here is because uh, I've gone to display settings, visual style, and showing hidden edges. I can also really show the hidden edges, and I can see all of my lines perfectly. So, um, you know, I, I didn't draft these walls, you know, I could have, but um, in fact, I kind of would like to just because I think it it makes it look more like something that's been uh, produced by the mold making process, which is kind of what we're doing, you know, what we're going for with this idea that these are game board game pieces. So uh, I probably would go back in and, and do that. I'm not going to do that right now because the video is already getting long. But um, basically at this point we're all set and I would probably save it at this point or many times along the way. Um, but the final step I think, is to um, just go to modify and combine these temporarily just so you can uh, export the STL. And this is what the STL file will look like. These are the triangles that make up the model. I can change it to uh, low, high, medium. Um, you know, unlike the 3D printer, the, if you have a low number of triangles, you may actually see that uh, difference with the milling machine. So I'd say, you know, you don't necessarily have to go to high, but uh, I think at least medium, you don't have to be the judge. Uh, and then um, just save it and uh, save it as an STL file and then go on to the process that happens uh, on the Linux computer connected to the uh, desktop milling machine. Okay, I hope that is a good enough review of everything that happened in class. Let me know if you have any questions.